Good morning, everybody. It is October 2nd, and I'm here with your daily wisdom shot. Um, just really quickly, tomorrow I am supposed to be returning to New York City, so this might be my last uh, video for a day or two. Um, so I decided to do it slightly differently today. I have three sets of cards like usual, but I feel like these are meant to be read either as three individual messages, so you can pick one um, before I read, and um, hopefully that'll resonate with you, uh, much like a pick a card reading, or you can take them all together, of course. Um, I'm gonna start with the first message, which is the Hermit with the Ace of Pentacles, or, I'm sorry, the Two of Pentacles. Is that the Two? Yes, that's the Two of Pentacles. Um, and I feel like the idea here is that um, you try, you may be trying to achieve balance here on the physical plane now that you have achieved it on a, um, a spiritual or energetic plane. <clears throat> and I feel like the way into that is through stillness. Um, it's through not reacting to your environment in an extreme way, but actually taking a step back with everything and anything that happens because the physical world is still just going to operate around you the same way it always has. It's really just up to us to decide how we're going to react to it. Um, and so the hermit is kind of uh, saying, you know, not only to go within, but to step back and to just kind of allow the energies to flow and flow in and out. And then um, we react through the center way, through the media, uh, the middle path or whatever, <laughs> whatever that saying is. Um, I feel like this brings not only balances your emotional reaction to things around you, but it balances your physical reality and the energy that you're putting out there because you're not allowing it to be um, affected by the, the wide uh, variety of energies which you come into contact every day. And I, f uh, I feel like that's really the <clears throat> key to peace is not expecting everything and everyone around you to... Um, never be imbalanced or never misbehave, so to speak, but it is in our own inner stillness and ability to let things roll off your back or simply not um, put the energy behind your reaction to things, not be reactionary and not put the energy there so that there's not the energy available to swing from one extreme to the other. That doesn't mean it will never happen, but I feel like this is saying that this, is, this should really be our goal for today. Um, the second group is the Fool with the Magician, and I will say that I've been shuffling cards a couple different decks this morning, and the Magician has like flown out every time. So to me, that tells me that this is a high, high, high manifestation time, um, and... You know, um, with the fool, I feel like number one, this is a, a time of setting yourself on the path that you're going to be going on for this fall, which all of which is a high manifestation time. Um, I think that's the message of the bottom of the deck as well, which relates to all three of these groups of cards, which was the three of wands. And it's like, how are you? How are you setting out on this journey? How are you starting this particular adventure? Um, and are you following your inner truth? Because there's the, um, the raven there in the picture. Um, so it's kind of the same for this middle group of cards because the fool is also starting out on a journey. Um, even though the picture in this deck is a donkey, i.e. an ass, um, I feel like the, the sort of apple pinned to the heart space on the, check, on the chest um, 
is about a kind of innocence and is about a kind of um, innocent desire for adventure or knowledge much like Adam and Eve picking the apple is always perceived as like temptation or some kind of evil force but to me it's a natural human desire to want to explore and to want to know and to want to see the world <clears throat> and that's where we're coming from now this is like the beginning of this brand new cycle and the fool is setting out with the intention of gaining the knowledge and gaining the um, experience of the entire tarot. I think it was Aleister Crowley who used to say that <clears throat> within the fool is every card in the tarot deck because it's the fool's journey from the beginning to the very end. And that's the message that I'm getting here is like this is the beginning of this journey and it is what you will make it through the magician. Um, and there is the energy is surrounding you now to make it everything that you would have desired. So I think it's time to pull yourself, if you we want to link these groups of cards together, pull yourself, pull your energy back just a bit so that you're acting from a state of balance and you're not, um, <clears throat> you're not attempting to manifest from a position of forcing things. You're manifesting from a state of peace, which is the most auspicious way to be trying to manifest um, your desires or your goals. The third set of cards is the Knight of Pentacles with the Queen of Cups. And this could be you or this could be somebody else. But I feel like this is saying that um, if movement has been slow, it's because there's more going on beneath than you realize. It means that there's more emotional involvement and there's more compassion needed from you than you may have realized in the past. And that this person, whether it's you or someone else, um, has been deeply injured in the past and their slow movement might be because they require um, an opening, a heart opening from you first. <clears throat> um, they require feeling safe. Um, they don't feel safe. They don't feel emotionally safe. And so you extending that compassion um, could make all the difference. And I'm not saying that you have to go and start a conversation that is maybe not necessarily wanted or something, but change your energy. Switch your energy to that of compassion and openness and receptivity. And I feel like this person is going to be able to um, kind of roll right in uh, in a more open fashion um, whereas right now, I feel like they're very much wearing their armor and um, or their leather, their leather armor, because of the amount of pain they've suffered through and the amount of um, hurt, that emotional hurt that someone or something or some situation has put them through at this point. So they're a little tough on the outside at the moment, but on the inside, they're actually very grounded and receptive and um, deep, you know. Um, so whoever this may be, whether it's you or someone else, whether this is about you showing compassion to yourself and allowing yourself the space to grow, or whether this is about, I feel like for some of you, this is about a teenage child. Um, that person needs your support and needs your emotional availability, even though they're not going to show it on the outside, they really need that. Um, and for others of you, this is like a romantic partner who has been kind of like dancing around the edges and <clears throat> or lurking around the edges because they're feeling it, but they're so injured from past situations or possibly even a situation with you 
that they're having trouble allowing vulnerability. And you are going to lead the way with that. You are going to lead the way with the vulnerability. Even if you remain in a more receptive state and you don't want to push this person, but you want to be receptive and you want to show them the way in a showing, not not telling kind of capacity, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so our <clears throat> oracle card for the day is from the Divine Feminine Oracle, and it's Zhu Xuanjing. And I love that there are so many like obscure, at least obscure to us in the Western world potentially, but obscure like Asian uh, females in this in this um, deck of cards, but I never know how to say their names. So anyway, Zhu Xuanxing, the mystic of peace. Her mantra is, I am peace. When my mind is clear, the way is clear. Zhu Xuanjing embodies the unwavering tranquility that exists beneath the turbulence of our daily thoughts. That's exactly what we just said in this reading. Um, Zhu Xuanjing was a 12th century Taoist mystic and poet. The night before her son's birth, she had a dream that she was immersed in a red mist. This is a very auspicious sign in Chinese culture. The title given to her as a master was Free Human of Mystic Peace. The emphasis in her poetry was the power, of inherent, uh, the power inherent in stillness. The secret of the receptive, she writes. What did we just talk about? Receptivity, being receptive. Um, she writes, must be sought in stillness. So the secret of the receptive must be sought in stillness. The way, or Taoism, is a spiritual practice of clearing the mind so that when we take action, it isn't from the ego, it's from the source of life itself. The pedestal of awareness is steady as a boulder. Zhu taught that meditation allows us to disengage from the surface drama that ego can invite us, invite us into. She often refers to the moon in her poetry because this was the symbol of the eternal sky or the freedom we can reach if we stop looking at the light and shadows the moon creates and see the moon itself. When your soul selects her card, Albert Einstein reportedly said that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Clarity only comes from clarity. There is peace and calm that exists far beneath the constant banter most of us listen to all day within our minds. Jungian author Clarissa Pinkola Estes calls, uh, calls it the river beneath the river. It's the steady flow of the universal life force that wants us each to reach our goal, even if we only get still enough to merge with it. Wu Wei in Taoism r translates as doing nothing. It's, sacred, it's the sacred feminine art of trusting the force of life that exists within us all. Zhu mastered this spiritual practice by calming her mind and experiencing the still center that is at the eye of every storm. Zhu is a call for us to be still, to do nothing other than shift our awareness. Come out of the current state of mind we're in before making any moves or decisions. She reminds us that we only want to take action when what is moving, when what is moving us is the force of love at the heart of everything. Soul voice meditation. Enter the heart and ask to experience stillness. Repeat the mantra, I am peace. The intention is, I am peace. When my mind is clear, the way is clear. So that really supports this whole reading very nicely. Um, we have a lot of cards of receptivity and of pulling back and allowing flow, allowing the flow of the life force, allowing the middle path, um, and manifesting from this place. So there are two themes here, receptivity and manifestation, and how and the place where the two of these ideas intersect is our advice for today. So I hope that this is very is uh, helpful for you guys. Um, please let me know in the comments as usual. Please like, subscribe, share, um, and I appreciate you all. I will be in touch again soon, but that time from New York. All right, talk to you then. Bye.